All right, so now that the Notion uh, API has been released, we've talked about a couple of examples of things that this could possibly be used for. Um, if you haven't seen that or you're interested in some ideas, I'll put a link down below to that original video. But now I want to talk specifically about uh, Notion and then getting data out of it. Um, of course, you could go the other way, but in this video, we're going to talk about Notion databases to Google Sheets using Zapier. So uh, the reason I chose Google Sheets is it's kind of a hopping off point. Um, once you get data into Google Sheets, if you use Zapier before or any other automation tools, you know that it can really uh, go anywhere truly from there. You know, you could be using Google Data Studio, you could be taking it into a bunch of other programs, but generally once you get it into Google Sheets, it's really easy to parse it, do other stuff with it, and send it to other places. So let's uh, start talking about that in just a sec. First of all, hey, I'm Adam with Productivity Academy. Uh, if you're interested in this type of stuff, you can subscribe to the channel or you can visit the website at productivity.academy. Find out some more information there. Now, let's talk about this. <clears throat> so what I did uh, previously was set up a test database inside of my Notion account. And um, this is, uh, if you're, I'm going to kind of go through step by step because I realize, you know, some of you may be um, already advanced using Notion a ton. If you're just seeing this though and you're not sure, I want to make sure you understand how this is done. So this is just a page that I created. And then down here, all I did was create a, an inline table, just like that. Gave it a name, added a few things to it, created some of the properties. Um, there's lots of great tutorials out there on how to use Notion. So I'm not going to cover all of that right now. And just put some stuff in so we can see how we can export uh, this stuff around and really play with it. So one of the things, though, that you have to do when you go into Zapier, let's say you haven't yet connected Notion to it. That's easy. Uh, it's like any other Zap. You come in here, you choose the app, and if you haven't um, connected Notion before, you get a pop-up window like you always do in Zapier saying, hey, you need to connect this, authorize it. And it gives you some details. And it's a little bit longer uh, than usual. What you do is you go into uh, Notion, and then you'll need to go into Settings and Members, and you're basically creating an integration, OK? So they walk you through it. It's not that complex. You go in. You need to get the key uh, for it. You're basically creating an integration. I named mine Zapier. You get the key for that. You put that in the little pop-up box. Hit Enter. You're good to go. But there is one more step that you need to do, and that is you need to actually share this with the um, Zapier. So um, let me show you what I'm talking about here. When you come down here to sharing, normally it would just say whatever you the standard sharing options are, but you need to go in and then uh, share it with the integration. I named mine Zapier. You could name yours anything else. So it isn't going to automatically say Zapier. You have to do that yourself. Um, and then give it edit in uh, abilities. Otherwise, when you go to set up your Zap at first, you won't see anything. It'll just say there's nothing here. There's nothing to see. Once you then share it, you uh, take care of that. That's that final piece. Then when you come in here, you can now see the database. All right. So just a reminder of that. If you're wondering, like you're like, man, I connected it. I'm just not seeing it. That's probably what's going on. So right now, uh, this is the choice that you get. So with the Notion Beta API new database item, so it's going to trigger when a new item is connected. So that's what we've done here. Um, I've got my account set up, and uh, the trigger is triggering on the test database. Obviously, you probably want to give it a better name than that if you're using this for something else uh, so that you can tell what it is. Uh, but that's all you really need to do. And then, uh, as always, you can excuse me, test the trigger. Um, highly suggest doing this. Then the next thing you want to do is have a Google Sheet. Now, what I did was just go ahead and create one. When you're creating these uh, with Zapped, you do need to have headers. So go ahead and do that because that's going to let you select under like what column to place your data from Notion. So you need to have this set up first, right? So as always, when setting these up, a little bit of prep work, you need to think through this. Um, you know, what do you want to import? For the test, this is easy. I'm just importing uh, as, uh, gave it a column heading of text. This is going to be, uh, let me move these over here so we can see, there's going to be the name and then we have dates because I felt like seeing how that was imported and then we just have some tags. And then I also added something else because I was like, you know, having not actually connected this, I bet there's a lot more data inside of Notion that maybe we could get out and maybe there's something fun in there. 
So I've already tested this uh, one time, but you probably want this to line up fairly well with these um, or some subset of that, whatever it is you're wanting to do with the data. You know, if you're having people fill stuff out and you need something, uh, a report made or whatever it is you're doing, you want to have probably good descriptive headers in your Google Sheet. Okay, so let's go ahead and try adding one in and see what we can do. So I'm going to call this a live test entry. Um, the date on here, of course, this could be a date something's due. It could be the date something's entered. There's a lot of different things to do. And this is a fairly simple um, example. So I'm going to put June 4th and then we're going to use some of the tags here. We're going to go ahead and select all of them. All right. So now what that should do is go ahead and trigger into uh, or trigger Zapier and go in. I'm sure it's going to have some sort of a delay. So I'll put this on pause and let you know how long this ends up taking. Ooh, and it didn't take any time because a very important part, don't make the same mistake as me. I forgot to turn the zap on in the first place. So as always do that and then, okay, good. So it is ready. So let's try that again. I'll put in a new one here. We're going to try live test entry two. And we'll put in the date and some more tags. We'll just select all that and I'll make it a fun one too. Live tag. There we go. All right. So that has been entered. Now let's go check it out. And I will pause here and make a note of the time and we'll be back in a second. All right. So the good news is it came through, but I ended up manually triggering it. So I didn't see it come through. I waited six and a half minutes and honestly was getting kind of bored. So I know that some of these can take up to, I think about 15 minutes. Uh, to, I think it again, depends perhaps on the Zapier plan, um, uh, whether uh, free, paid, like enterprise, I think they have different checking intervals if I remember correctly. So that is probably it. Um, not too worried about it. I saw that this all came through the last entry I put in here and I like the way that that is done. So um, the one thing I wanted to then go back and talk about here because we we talked on the zap how I set the, up the headers and then something else. So this is kind of neat because it shows, um, let's look at set up the action here. This is where we actually tell uh, Zapier, hey, grab this from the spread or sorry, from Notion and then where to put it on the spreadsheet. And down here, these are the headers that are in the spreadsheet that write the column headers. So that's what we're seeing up here. And then down here, something else, uh, that's why I added that in. So we could look at all the things we could put in here. This looks familiar probably, that these are the, the name, it's the title of it as well. But if you show all options, you can come across um, other things that it's pulling from Notion and you could possibly use. Like created time may be useful to have a timestamp of when this thing was created um, because that may not be the same as the properties date start, right? Which is the one that I selected. What else do we have? Last edited time, that could be useful. And then there's just some other stuff about um, whether it's you know the database information, perhaps if uh, there's more advanced stuff down the road, you may need some of this information, but that could be helpful. So hopefully this uh, gives you some ideas and uh, shows you how you can quickly get this set up. Uh, just remember when you're doing this with Notion and you're authorizing with Zapier, make sure that you're actually authorizing in Notion, once you get everything set up, you've got to share that database with that new integration and make sure that this is works and you will actually be able to find your database in Zapier. So other than that, looking forward to hearing uh, what people set up, seeing what other people do. If you have any questions or comments about this, by all means, let me know and uh, get back to you.